Hi, this is Vicki Gilford Parnell, and I have come to share another dream with you. I had this dream last night. Today is 6 18 24, and I started journaling it at 8 29 a.m., and I was up since 4 o'clock. I woke up around 4 a.m., laid back down for just a few minutes, dreamed the same. Well, didn't dream all of it, I just had little bits and pieces of it. And again, I'm asking you to pray about this dream and take the Lord Jesus Christ. Try and test it. We are called, each child of God, to prove all things. Despise not prophecy. Prophecies. Prove all things. That's in 1 Thessalonians 5, 20-21. 1 John 4, 1. Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits, whether they be of God. For many false prophets have gone out into the world. When I ask you to pray about something, I am asking for you to seek the meaning, the understanding, and the wisdom that God has for you, the divine revelation. A lot of times God is not clear. You have to seek and pray. It does not mean the word is not from God Almighty, Jesus Christ. There he talks all throughout the Bible in parables. You are to discern, try, and test for your own safety. I have been studying all this today in great length and been praying over these things for a while. And I'm asking you take it to the Lord Jesus Christ in prayer. Try the Spirit to do the research yourself. Because when I've always asked you to pray about this, when you hear a prophetic word, a prophetic dream, a prophetic vision, a teaching, a sermon, it is up to you to examine it, prove it with the Word of God. Look at the fruits of of the life of the person, do they have the attributes of Jesus Christ? Are they leading? Is or is that person giving the dreams, vision, words, teachings, preaching, trying to draw you away from Father God or Jesus Christ? These are signs to look for. If they are, they are false. If anybody, even though their words seem to be true, if they point you to any direction but Jesus Christ to get to heaven, that's a big sign. That is a false prophet. Pray about it though. You are to protect yourself. The word of God says study to show thyself approved a workman unto God, rightly dividing the word. How do you do that? Study, pray, read. And we are called to pray without ceasing, to pray about everything. Ephesians 6, 16, 18, I believe, mentions about praying over all things. It's also in the proving So take this to Jesus Christ in prayer. I have tested it, and I have tried it for myself. And I am delivering this word in the name of Jesus Christ with all confidence. It is from Jesus Christ, my Savior, my Lord, and my God. And no one can call Him your Savior, my Savior, except through the Holy Spirit, according to 1 Corinthians 12.3. Let's go there. And I know many of you are waiting for, waiting for the dream, and it's coming. But this is important for your own sake. First Corinthians twelve three plainly says, unless they've changed it, and there's things going on in the word thing. Wherefore I give you to understand that no man speaking by the Spirit of God calleth. Jesus accursed, and that no man can say that Jesus is the Lord, but by the Holy Ghost. And you know that is Jesus Christ that they're talking about through Scripture, because we have created the the verses, uh, the chapters, and, and the division. I'm going to read it right quick. I want to read here. I did the study. Do the Greek study, the Hebrew study. Learn what the Word of God means. When it says no man, no man it is the Greek ooters, 
O U D E R S O U D E R S sorry G three seven six two Greek it's the Greek word meaning not even one man woman child or thing none nobody nothing neither anything never not that's what it means when it says no man speaketh by the Spirit of God, calleth Jesus accursed, and that no man can say that Jesus is the Lord, but by the Holy Ghost. And you know they're speaking of Jesus Christ in this, because it speaks of Christ throughout here, mentioning Christ. So please, please, please protect yourself. All right, let's pray, and then we'll get on with this dream. This dream is entitled, is titled, Antichrist's Mark a royalty dream. So please pray about this. If I seem stern, if I seem, when I have a dream like this, really like this, and I know the Lord's wanting it out of me, I pray. And I have been again praying and fasting about other things too, just praying and fasting and seeking the Lord. That's when these things start coming. Let's pray. Father God, I come to you in the name of Jesus Christ and sweet Holy Spirit. I ask you lead this prayer. I surrender to your will in Jesus Christ's name because you are the spirit of truth. And you will only lead me closer and to the revelation of Jesus Christ and his word. Father God, let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Send this out, and I pray for it to be covered under the barrier of stealth and invisibility and continue protection for my family and myself in Jesus Christ's name. I declare and decree no retaliation, backlash, interference of any such thing, any such device, in, in all knowledge of God of how they can or would attempt to do it. In all his existence, I command it to be stopped. Because, God, you know exactly what they will use or try to use. You are all-knowing. And I give you praise, and I, I thank God, for, I thank you for that, Father, in Jesus Christ's name. And I stand on Job twenty two twenty eight, which talks about decreeing a thing and doing it when we line up with the Word of God, when you start reading all the scriptures. If our lives, your children's lives, line up with the Word of God, and we're living the best of our ability with your help, because none of us are perfect then we can stand boldly and declare your word over our lives in faith in the power and name of Jesus Christ. And it will happen because Isaiah 55, 11 says, Your word, Jesus Christ, your word will not return void, but will accomplish all you set it out to do, all that you please it to do. That's the power of a true God. You speak and it's done unless you rescind it. And as I was studying, Lord, you showed me even scripture today where it says prophecy will fail, meaning there's times, like in Amos 7, you will change it. You're God. You can do that. Amos 7, you said you were going to send grasshoppers. Amos, talk to you. It says you repented. Father God, that means you had a change of heart. You were moved by his words, his compassionate words for his people, your children, children of Israel. Then you said, I'm going to bring fire. You showed him visions of these things. He petitioned again. And once again, you were moved by your mercy and great love. Judgment was still coming. You had done declared judgment. It's coming. But not by either one of those ways. Prophecy failed in those two. But, but, they did go into captivity. As we read the rest of that chapter, we can tell by Amos' words that he's saying captivity is coming. Hallelujah. Lord, I give you praise for understanding. Lord, when I grew up, I was taught whatever God says, that's it. It's final. And it is to a point, except you can change it if you so choose. And you showed me, like with, with Agabus the prophet, how that his words and his prophecy he gave were for many years later. And then, you, of course, we have Daniel, and we have Ezekiel and Isaiah, who, who prophesied of the coming Messiah thousands of years, hundreds of years later. Father God, why do we limit you? 
Why do we set everything on our timetable when your timing is perfect? Give us understanding and wisdom in all things and help us to quit pointing at one another. Help us to quit calling the spirit we're operating in of God Almighty, the Holy Spirit, wrong because you believe different. Open our eyes to the truth, Lord. I humbly pray and ask. I'm talking to myself too. I'm seeking for your truth in all things. And Lord, this dream confirmed things you had told me and shown me. And I didn't want to get, again, I did not want to release this, even though it's got information needed for the people because it talks about me. And I would rather keep it quiet and not speak of these things. But you have given me a mandate that I have to share it, so I'm going to share it. Not my will, but thine be done, God. I'm a very private person, but not my will, but thine be done. I surrender to you. I surrender to you, God. You own my life, so you do with it what you want and how you please. If it means I'm getting out of my comfort zone again, so be it. If it will reach and help somebody, so be it. It's not about me. It's all about you, Jesus Christ. Now I cancel all witchcraft. All types of witchcraft, vexes, hexes, curses, Lord. I break them all in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. All plots, plans, gin, snares, nets, I send right back at them. At them all with amplified effects, deflecting all with my shield of faith. Covered in the blood of Jesus, for I've reaffirmed each piece of my armor. And I have covered it in the blood of Jesus, asking it to be done by you, Jesus Christ. Every arrow and dart I send back to them Lord if any made it through I ask them be removed in Jesus Christ's name and for the fire of God the sweet Holy Spirit's fire and the blood of Jesus to cleanse and heal because I don't know which or what kind and I've learned it's one of the three it takes one of the three Lord I don't understand it all but I know when I use all three everything's cleaned out and I am grateful by the power of Jesus Christ's name and his blood and for the holy armor, Lord, we hide under the shadow of your wings, according to Psalms 91. But it is the armor of God that protects us from the schemes and wiles of the, of the enemy, of their plans and plots. But our protection, protection is under your wing. And that's where I intend to stay, under your blood and under your wings. And I am not moving out, Father God, in Jesus Christ's name, unless you make me with your help. I don't want to go anywhere. You're where I want to be. Every device, gizmo, gadget, weapon, technology, of all known to you, Father God of the enemy, in every form of communication, every Thing uttered and muttered and peeped and prayed against words and against phrases. I break them in Jesus Christ's name and I deprogram everything pertaining to this ministry and myself that might contain a charm, bewitchment, or such like, cutting the cords with the fire of Almighty God in heaven that fell when. Elijah called forth the fire in 1 Kings 18. He prayed and the fire fell, but he knew God would move. He knew or he would not have been making mockery of the, the prophets of Baal. Perhaps your God is on a journey. Perhaps he's sleeping. That's the power of a man of God who knows his God will not fail and will back him up 100%. And that's where we have to get in Jesus Christ's name. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Lord, increase our faith in you. Increase our faith in you. Now, Lord, I also bind them. I need to bind them. Yes, Lord, I bind them and throw them into the, the pit, Lord, canceling all assignments in Jesus Christ's name. I give you praise in all things. Now, Holy Spirit, you take this where you need it. Excuse me. Father God, I have never asked anybody to upload or to put any of these videos anywhere they're free to share they're free to go out as long as nothing's changed except it has to be changed in translations i thank the people that's let me use their sites when i first started i thank you lord for pastor dane and i thank you for burning brown ministry 
But Father God, this is your sight, my lovely Jesus ministry. It is your sight, Jesus Christ. Your will, your way will be done. And again, I, I cry and pray out and command and demand Luke 8, 17 over every inch of it, every particle of my life, and command everything hidden to be removed and every posture to be exposed. Every imposter be exposed in Jesus Christ's name. Hallelujah. 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 Excuse me just a moment. My chair is sliding with me. <laughs> Lord, I love you. I praise you. I praise you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Let me make this clear. Excuse me. I know it's the Lord. I have had many dreams of Antichrist. They are my least favorite. Just so you know. He's evil, he's malevolent, he's creepy. But it's got to be done. All right, 6 18 24, I journeyed it, started at 8 29. <coughs> Lord, I also want to move any traps, triggers, or booby traps. And we're trying to go against my throat and activate it when I start to do a video or turn this camera on. That's what it is. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. A little herbal stuff in that water. <laughs> it's the Lord is led. Hallelujah. Healing comes in many ways. You just trust the Lord and have him lead you. I commend my nose to quit it. In Jesus Christ's name. Okay, Jesus Christ, my love. I have been praying on and off since 4 a.m. this morning. I dreamed again. And I'm standing on John 14, 26 and 1 John 2, 27. Please, sweet Holy Spirit, lead me and help me once again to only write the truth of what my lovely Jesus Christ and Father God has shown me. I trust Him and stand on His word. I stand on the Word of God for everything now. Then not always do it. I do now because Jesus Christ is the Word. I want to be grounded and rooted in Him. It began when I found myself in a, st in a sterile looking medical lab type area. It's some type of testing area. Everything looks white to me. There are people in the room, but I can't tell who they are or how many at this moment at this moment I feel I am to examine the medical room closer I see that the room itself appears to be round with a door to my left and an opposite door of it I saw to my left three glass windows that open for the examinations that open further examinations are for observation I read that wrong. <laughs> I saw to my, in the name of Jesus, I cancel any attacks that would be implemented against my reading. Holy Spirit, take over. In Jesus Christ's name. I saw to my left three glass windows that upon further examination are for observation. Each window is connected to a room that looks like a patient's room at a hospital, but with lots and lots of of medical equipment inside each. There is also beds with people or patients strapped down to them. I began pleading the blood of Jesus Christ over me silently as I prayed. I looked over to my right and see there are three more sets of large glass windows. I walked over and looked through these also each one I see inside that, inside, side that there are also people strapped to the beds in these rooms. There are a total of six glass observation windows in this medical type room. A door to my left and a door directly across from it. I can now focus on the people. I knew are here, but wasn't able to see at first. 
I understood this was so I would take time to check out the rooms in the other side of the six large windows in this round shaped room. This is what it looks like, sorry, just a little. There are two men dressed in business casual clothes with each having a white lab coat over them. One I can tell is tall and slender in his build with blonde hair that's cut short in the back but is what I call bushy and full on the top forming wavy long bangs that fall upon his white forehead. He is wearing some type of clear safety goggles excuse me, that has a rubber type strap to ensure they don't fall off his face while he's working. Next to him is a short, stocky built man with a shaved head they, that I can tell once had dark hair. They both are in light tan or khaki colored trousers, comfortable looking business casual type loafer shoes with comfortable, in the name of Jesus Christ, with comfortable looking business casual type loafer shoes. Lord, I praise you. I praise you. I praise you. In Jesus Christ's name, I praise you and I give you glory and I ask Holy Spirit, clear everything out in Jesus Christ's name. Hallelujah. Excuse me. Thank you. The stocky built man has on a long sleeve, white button up, medium blue shirt with a dark blue pullover knit vest. The blonde-haired, tall, skinny one is wearing a tan, lightweight pullover sweater that has two dark brown, narrow stripes running around his sleeves near the elbow. I can see when he turns toward the shorter man, his sweater also has a thin white stripe running across the chest area. In all this, I understood this room and all its experimental proceedings were done in a controlled, colder temperature. The stocky built man looks like he may be a Mexican of Mexican descent, I noticed, as he began speaking. Is everything ready on your part, Eduardo? It's time for him to arrive. The blonde-haired Eduardo looked at the other man and replied in a voice with a European accent. Yes, Juan, I am, he replied. He will be pleased with our test results on most of our specimens. Then he removed his goggles, laying them on a nearby table. Specimens, I thought to myself. Is he calling those people strapped to their beds specimens? Jesus Christ, my love, what's going on here and who's coming? I ask in my mind, being very careful not to speak just in case they might hear me. I heard from the heavens in a still, small voice. Daughter, beloved daughter of mine, I have brought you here to learn the status and progress of what is still coming upon your world. You cannot be seen, heard, felt, or smelled while you are here, for I am hiding you under my wing as you prayed and asked for me to do for you and your family when you prayed over yourselves and them, including covering your dreams. My Holy Ghost Spirit shall lead you, follow his leading. I will, Jesus Christ, my love. I will, thank you. You are welcome, I heard the reply from heaven that only I could hear. Okay, sweet friend, Holy Ghost, what am I to do? I asked softly, and I heard him reply, Be still. Watch and listen. Only move if I tell you to. Okay, I agreed quickly. I saw the door to my right begin to open. They're here, Juan said, almost giddy with excitement, yet I could tell he was also nervous of whoever was coming through the door. 
so is Eduardo, though he was able to hide it better than Juan. They both stood and straightened themselves as if standing to attention, as the military officers do when someone of great importance is coming or passing before them. Excuse me. The square door panel I hadn't noticed before began lighting up with muted colors, their brightness muted by the clearest panel covering them. Excuse me. Oh, what? Sorry. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. The door is then open, and in walks the very tall Nephilim woman, Serena. Still red-headed, dressed in a tight black straight skirt that goes to right above her knees, and a silk long sleeve button-up blouse that reminded me of the color of a red fox. So I come to mind, a red fox. Her now long hair is pulled back in a high ponytail. She is heavily made up with makeup and wearing large gold hoop earrings and gold chains, all symbols of the marine water kingdom of the enemy's kingdom. She apparently is higher up in the enemy's ranks, I realize now, than I thought from the first time I saw her in the delusion had begun dream that Jesus Christ gave me in May, on May 1st, 2021. Behind her, to my surprise, is Barack Obama, dressed in an expensive navy blue two-piece suit. He is wearing a white button-up button -up shirt with a shiny, solid gold, medium, excuse me, a solid medium gold color tie. There is a serious look on his face as he enters. As each person enters the, the two men in the lab coat seem to be trying to stand straighter and straighter, if this were possible. The next person to walk into this medical type facility room was Elon Musk. He too is dressed in a two-piece expensive business suit that was so dark brown that it almost appeared to be black in color, with a dark orange tie and white shirt. A brown suit, I said to myself. That's not, a very, that's not very common. And then I stopped, as I realized who had walked into the room together. Elon Musk, the left hand of the man Antichrist, who handles most the electronic and technology for him, and Barack Obama his right-hand man who handles the governments and people operating in the Antichrist spirit right with Antichrist himself. Obama is his forerunner, but also his end-time false prophet, written of in the Holy Word of God and our Holy Bibles. Our Holy Bibles. That must mean, I started to say quickly, just as... Antichrist himself came strolling in the room in a very expensive, solid black suit with a white shirt and a dark blue tie. He's walking with an air of superiority as he entered. This was who the two men, Eduardo and Juan, have been waiting to see. Their eyes almost instantly glazed over with adoration and reverent awe at being in Antichrist's presence. The whole scene made me want to vomit. Pay attention, I heard sweet Holy Spirit say to me in a soft, gentle rebuke. Yes, I'm sorry. I will, I answered him back in true repentance of heart. Forgive me, Jesus Christ, I whispered under my breath. Done, came his sweet reply from the heaven above. I focus fully on the people in the room with the Nephilim Serena who are now talking with the two men, Juan and Eduardo. Excuse me. Thank you, Lord. Excuse me. Thank you, Jesus. Gentlemen, Antichrist said in a smooth, seductive voice 
drawing the man deeper under his charismatic spell. I hear you have good news for me, he said. Eduardo spoke up fast. We do, your majesty, sir, he stuttered. Antichrist seemed to enjoy the adoration and reaction he had on the two he has on the two men that seemed to me to be more seemed to me that they were having a bad misplaced time of hero worship. That's what came to my mind. A bad misplaced time of hero worship. Please call me Sir Antichrist said with a grin. Obama and Elon Musk appeared to be enjoying the scene before them too. While the tall Nephilim giant Serena seemed almost bored by her looks that she kept easily hidden from the two men because of her height. What is your name? Antichrist asked the blonde headed man. I apologize for the noise. My family's here. They just returned. Okay. My name is Eduardo, he finally replied in a calmer voice. Antichrist turned to look at the stocky built man standing beside Eduardo, and he spoke these words. You must be Juan. Yes, sir, I am, he replied quickly. The man of sin rubbed his hands in anticipation and, see, and said to them, Let's see the results. The two men in the white lab coats were spurned into action. Eduardo, excuse me, Eduardo began speaking as Juan passed to each person who had arrived copies of, a pre, of prepared reports and findings with both Eduardo and Juan having one too. As you can see, the results are higher than expected overall. Subject specimens 1, 2, and 3 on your right, which would be by, on my left where I am standing, observing all this, have all had, now I can't say some of this, the C10 plus 9 thing in your arm plus the additional ones. Types of things, the additional ones, types of things that you put in your arm also, and oral intakes that has been taken into the bodies each containing the M RNA nurses. M R and an N and an A. I'm sorry, I just can't say it. Technology with the current advancements included already in all medications, vitamins, and herbal supplements across the world. Even the gel cap capsules themselves have been made with the graphene we have included in these type things. One spoke. The nan One spoke up. The nanoparticles also are in almost everything upon the earth in addition to the pharmaceuticals. The water, the food, even the air that's breathed. All these things have been factored into these results. I see, Antichrist said then. Am I writing? And smiled, causing an evil gleam in his eyes that soon became seen in all that came with him to this little secret educational meeting of sorts. So what are the end results of your findings, Antichrist asked quickly. Getting back to business with another smile on his face. Eduardo smiled a small, small back and then said, We all know once the C10 plus 9 things that poke into your arms were rolled out, the mega doses of these aforementioned things inside, among other, would immediately but slowly begin, begin the desired mutation process inside the world's population, which began in full force when the 5G technology came online. I hear we have Mr. Musk's assistance in this area. Thank you, sir, Eduardo said quickly. Elon, Elon smiled and replied, It was my pleasure. 
Please continue, Antichrist said quickly. Bring the conversation back to what he was waiting to hear. The blonde-haired man cleared his throat, mumbled a quick apology, then continued. Since his time with the addition of Mr. Musk's satellites and other contributions, the signal is broadcasting throughout the airwaves almost solidly, both day and night, but will be at full signal strength once all comes back online after the three days of darkness. In subjects one, two, and three, we gave them the coming mark of loyalty that both Mr. Musk and Mr. Obama have made contributions to. The mark still needs that one last piece of superior technology that we have been updated that you, sir, shall soon provide for us. Eduardo said to Antichrist, I see now he has his fingers to his chin as if thinking, while his other hand holding the papers with a light blue file background, backing is placed across his front, using this arm and hand to support his hand next to his, next to his chin. We will acquire it, he said. It's written in the God of Heaven scripture of truth, that my mark shall be available to all the world. The mark is working now, but on an individual basis. Without the other piece of forbidden technology, those who take your mark of loyalty will not be connected to the rest of the hive. They will be able to, se to separate and think on their own. Nor will you be able to control all, commanding all to worship you as you excuse me as you deserve to be at the same time, the same moment in time. Antichrist scowled slightly and then asked, Are the results the same for all on this side of the area? Excuse me. Yes, thank you, Lord. Yes, Eduardo replied, and the stocky built one was shaking his head in agreement. One spoke up and asked, Antichrist, getting past his nervous, reverent fear of the evil man. You said you would be getting the forbidden technology, the missing piece. Do you know where it is? Why can't we get it now, sir? Antichrist replied swiftly, It's still sunk hidden inside the city of Atlantis. Words, words have come forth from some of the Nazarene's children that it would be found soon. Do they know of the location of Atlantis so it can be collected now? One asked. Barack Obama finally spoke up and said, We know currently of one of that filthy Nazarene's children, a daughter of heaven she is called, who has been given the, the location of where it sank. We sent some of our best evil agents and entities to infiltrate her life, but she never revealed the true location. Finally, their true selves were revealed by the power of the scripture of truth and the Nazarene's name. She has grown strong in him, and he protects her family and her very well. My mouth is hanging open because I know they're talking about me. Most people in our world today believe Atlantis is a myth, but it's not, I said to myself. It's a fallen angel in Nephilim City that ruled the waters and in Bible days went by a different name. I have been there in dreams with my lovely Jesus Christ and his holy angels also. I have seen the hidden technology as well as a black cube and other items of heaven's forbidden knowledge. The enemy seeks to obtain and twist and will twist for their use and their benefit when they get it. Then they'll give it to mankind who was never intended to possess such things. My thoughts are interrupted when I heard the man Juan ask, If she's still human and living on the top side of the earth, and she's accessible, isn't she? I don't want to share this, Lord. 
the attempts to re-infiltrate her life by our dark lords has been successful at times. There's two still hidden, we think. We're not sure, we're not sure because she keeps praying against all our known and even unknown tactics in that cuss cuss filthy Nazarene's name. We've managed to poison her again, but the human operative was sloppy and incompetent, and for the last two poisonings, too much was placed into the, her water supply. The Nazarene's daughter could tell physically in days the time before last, and within hours the last time, she was poisoned. Those of our hidden in her life have reported this to the other Dark Lords. The Light Bear has ordered her abduction, but each attempt he's ordered, the Nazarene's holy angel steps in, or his spirit within her has helped her escape. All attempts to kill her have failed as well, Obama said in disgust. So it's true, then, Eduardo said in, surpri in surprise. Life can't be taken from someone unless the God of Heaven or his Nazarene son says so. Andy Christ responded in a deadly voice. Would you like to find out for yourself if that is a true fact or not? Eduardo's eyes, <clears throat> excuse me, Eduardo's eyes filled with terror, and he stuttered, No, no, your majesty. You and the dark lords who gave you your power are all powerful. Thank you, excuse me. He said in a still shaky voice, Your majesty, then how may I ask do we finally get our hands on this last piece of needed technology? Juan asked, trying to turn the conversation away from the deadly turn of events before Eduardo ended up dead. I'm fervently praying to myself in Jesus Christ's name, Luke 8:17, over my life while pleading his blood again over myself. I don't want to be here, but all I can pray now is, Lord, your will be done in all things. I continue to watch. As Antichrist put on a charming smile, immediately turning from lethal killer to beloved ruler and man of the hour. The one called Daughter of Heaven, who has been a blight in my life sent from the Nazarene, has revealed when the giant earthquake comes that moves mountains and islands out of places in the scripture of truth, Atlantis shall resurface as well as other of our dark lords' empires of those now buried by land and sea. We will wait for this moment in time as the God of heaven has made it the appointed time for this to be. Let's continue with the results, he said, in these three test specimens. How did they respond to the G, the 6G and higher technology? Eduardo, glad to be on this subject, he knew well once again, spoke and said, When the 6G and higher frequencies and pitches are added to those fully, when they're put in their arms and the additional ones, the mutation process altering the body, body's DNA from the way that it was once originally created by the God of Heaven, begin processing and the changes tripled in the speed as the nanos released further loads during this time of the other key elements needed of the different venoms utilized including the serpents and the bats. That's inside them. Marvelous Antichrist replied as he looked down at Elon Musk and smiled. I knew this was because Elon Musk's neural chip, satellites, and other technology played a major role in the beast's mark, the mark of Antichrist being called his loyal loyalty mark, made for our end time days. Serena and Obama were smiling at the good news also. To me, it was horrible news. 
Then Serena asks Juan, what about the other three specimens in rooms four, five, and six? Eduardo looked nervously over at Juan and then cleared his throat. Um, well, the results were not as favorable in these specimens. We appropriated by forceful means. They have all had different results. Number four had the first C, 10 plus 9, and one of the additional ones in the arms, but they then refused the others, stating religious beliefs as her reason for not having to take them. She was a nurse that professes to be a child of the Nazarene. We picked her after watching her closely for several months because if she's truly one of his, her faith is weak. She spent a lot of time doing the activities that a true Nazarene's child doesn't do. Obama spat out, so she's either a hypocrite or a backslider, as the Bible says. And then he began to laugh. Perfect choice, he said, and then continued. Like most now who confess to know him. When did she arrive here? Antichrist asked with a smile of humor on his face. I recognize his being there because of what Obama, his right-hand man, and his forerunner had just said. He is pleased, I can tell. She was brought here the same as the last two in rooms five and six. It is around six months ago with nothing more than a missing persons report filled out to give any type of clue to what happened to them. Antichrist nodded his head in approval. Excuse me. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Eduardo continued. Without having all the additional things in the arm, the pokes, and no protection from the Nazarene because of her life of sin, as the Bible calls it. She only showed a mutation increase when subjected to the same 6G frequencies. We were able to inject... Um, she was only shown... I'm sorry. Because of her life of sin, the Bible calls it, she only showed a mutation increase when subjected to the same 6G frequency. We were able to inject her with your mark of loyalty, even though she did not agree, because it's still lacking the final piece of technology. If that final piece was installed, then she would have to choose to take it for her to be taken in as part of the hive and rejecting the God of heaven and his Nazarene son. We all know when it comes to taking the mark of loyalty, it has to be a conscious decision because it involves the eternal soul and the, and the God of heaven has mandated it to be this way once it's completed. Yes, you are correct, Antichrist said. But it did produce favorable results, right, he asked. Yes, there was an increase of almost 2% in the mutating of the DNA through the M, R plus N plus A, and the CRISP plus R, CRISP R technique. But even with her, we utilized some of the newer also. Good, good, Antichrist replied with a smile, while the others nodded their head in approval. Spe excuse me. The number five specimen had only the first C10 plus 9 jabby thing without any additional ones. Without any additional ones following. This person also professed to know the Nazarene personally, and his life reflected it when our people observed him before we abducted him. He was a professor at a well known college. With him, the mutation process had already started from the from the only one jab poke he had, but the other ways in life he has been introduced to has allowed the mutation to slowly take place. Excuse me. 
Thank you, Lord. Wait. What do you mean slowly? If he's had one of the jab things in the arms. Of our cocktail given in the arm. And is still in taking those things through the air, meds, food, and drink, Obama asked in a rush, not liking what he heard. Juan spoke and said, The man at some time has repented. He asked in the Nazarene's name to be forgiven when he finally researched the results of it. After being led by the God of Heaven's Spirit living inside him, of all the harms it does to the body. Then why hasn't all the mutation process stopped? Elon Musk asked then. Then continued, unless this professor isn't aware of all the other ways we're getting it into his body. If he didn't ask the Nazarene to stop what the C10 plus 9 pokey thing was doing to to fully be restored to him, to heal him, then this is legally what is still active and being changed by us. They have legal access to do it. Yes, that is all we could ascertain as to the why this Nazarene child, although it's slower, can still be mutating. Even after we poked him, with the loyalty mark it reached excuse me it reached with what was remaining in the professor's body but mildly compared to the others the other three in rooms one through three again i clarify we're only able to give you give your loyalty mark because it is not fully completed yet Understood, Musk said, as Antichrist asked, What about specimen number six? Eduardo looked troubled but spoke anyway. He is an elderly man which refused all the C10 plus 9 and other pokes in the arm. He's a retired pastor but never seems to be able to keep his mouth shut from talking about that Nazarene, even with all we've done to him. He is strong in him. The power of the spirit of the God of heaven in him, even for his age. Upon our observation, he lives his life as the word of God tells the Nazarene children to live. If we've got one of those here, Obama said, it's only because the God of heaven allowed it. Hmm, yes, you're right. I suspect he has some point... He wants to make to us, Antichrist said smoothly. Juan spoke up. Some God will love if he lets us do all we've done to him to prove a point. It's the trying and testing, the purging they call it. Those who serve the Nazarene. It keeps them powerful in him, Elon Musk said. I'm interested in knowing his results. He then added. We all are, Serena said in an amused voice. As a Nephilim, she had many dealings with Jesus Christ's children, those both true and false. Okay, then, Antichrist said, as he rubbed his hands together. Let's see what point the God of heaven wants to show us. This early man may be strong in the Nazarene, but he, but he may not be fully awake as his children call it, when they're fully aware physically and spiritually of our agenda for this world. Excuse me. <coughs> Thank you, Lord. He's not fully aware, Eduardo said. But he's like none of the others we've ever had before. He tells us he forgives us, he loves us, and so does his God, the Nazarene. And he prays prayers of protection in faith alone in the Nazarene and knows he's the living word. He knows his authority in the Nazarene's name, but doesn't resist us. He said when he prayed about us, he was told not to resist. The grace and comfort of his God would be with him always. 
He's one tough old man, Eduardo said. Eduardo finished. Excuse me. I've heard all that before, Obama spat out in disgust. Easy, my friend, Antichrist said, as he placed his hand on Obama's shoulder. This information shall be valuable for us. We may be able to use it in the remaining martyrs still to come when we hunt the Nazarene's children as open sport. It's soon our time to do so. Barack Obama began grinning from ear to ear. You're right, he said. Antichrist turned back to Eduardo and Juan and asked, What are his results? There's no mutation at all in his body. What? Antichrist exclaimed and said thoughtfully, I should have known. The loyalty mark, did you insert it into him as well? We did, not once but twice. And, Antichrist asked expectantly, it was as if we hadn't poked anything into him. The old black pastor is healthier than a lot of younger people in the world. All I can say is there's evidence in his body of past illnesses and scars, but at some point he got hold of the understanding of healing from the Nazarene and his word. It's almost like he's supernaturally protected. Even when he's been beaten, he will bruise and bleed, but then he heals quickly. He spits the word of healing for himself and tells all of us he forgives and loves us. It's the strangest thing. I've heard of things like this growing up, but I've never witnessed it for myself. Eduardo finished. So what point is the God of heaven trying to make to you? Juan was brave enough to ask Antichrist and his group. Antichrist replied, It's simple. The choice to receive his son as Savior, or me, when it comes time, has to be clearly made without deception. It will not be allowed, but also forced markings of anyone refusing voluntarily to take my mark of loyalty will prove ineffective. This is because it is a choice concerning his beloved mankind's fate of their eternal soul. Antichrist looked up toward the heavens and then said in a menacing voice, It's understood, God of heaven. So I will deceive them with many signs and wonders you have allowed for me. So when it comes their time to decide, I will be their choice. Then he laid his head back and began laughing in a deep, wicked, evil laugh. Then I abruptly jolted out of my sleep and immediately began praying, testing, trying this dream in Jesus Christ's name. I hit my knees praying. Oh, actually, in the bed. Didn't hit my knees. It's a phrase we use immediately. So please pray about this. A lot of information in here. I can't say certain words because it will be on YouTube. It will be banned. It will be a mark against us. Here are the verses. Revelation 13, 2. 2 Thessalonians, excuse me. <clears throat> Revelation chapter 13. The whole chapter. 2 Thessalonians 2, 3 through 12. Revelation 6, 12 through 14, 14, 9 through 11. Matthew 28, 19 through 20. Romans 6, 16 and verse 23. Ecclesiastes 3, verse 1 and 11. 1 Corinthians 10, 13. 1 Peter 3, 12. Job 34, 21. Proverbs 5.21 And I'm asking you, you pray about this. Not that this word, this dream is not from God, but you have to try and test that for yourself. Because it is your responsibility to do so. Excuse me. Thank you, Lord. I try the spirits and test the preaching, teaching I hear, songs I hear, 
the people singing, a lot of people I used to listen to, I listen to no longer. I watch their lives. Everything has to line up with the Word of God. With the understanding there are times when things doesn't happen immediately. It talks about where was that Lord about prophecy feeling? In 1 Corinthians 13, 8 through, 8 through 9, it does talk about prophecy fills at time. It doesn't mean that the word given was not 100% true at that time. It means God may have stepped in and changed something like he did with Jonah 3. Or when Jonah said for 40 days, in four, yet in 40 days, this city will be overthrown. He's standing on the day he's living and he's saying, you have 40 days and this is going to be overthrown. Gave an exact time, exact date. What does that mean? God can give a time if he so chooses. Most of the time he does not. He's God. He's not limited to us. A lot of people teach us otherwise. But I'm saying check out 2 Kings chapter 2. Where Elijah has been given the date he's going to be removed. He's going to be taken up to heaven. He knows it. Elisha knows it. And the prophets of the school knows it. It's not a hidden fact. They're watching to see him leave. Elisha is going with him. That's actually in 2 Kings 2, verse 1, 3, 5, and 9. I've done a lot of research and study on this. Because I don't want to be deceived or misled. Now this, and, and, I, and I've been taught that all my life. God will not give a date. Yes, he will. If he so chooses. And he can change a date if he so chooses. He's God. Who are we to tell God he can't do that? I have prayed Luke 8, 17. God, show me your truth. I don't want to be filled up with man-made doctrines or misunderstanding. Some of it is simply we just, we've been taught, we misunderstand, we go by what we've been heard. That's why we need to study it ourselves. Get in here. Look up the Greek words. Look up the Hebrew words. You can do it on, on like the Bible Hub. Or you can do it on the Blue Letter Bible.org. There's places that will help you get a concordance. Study the word. Learn it for yourself. Translations can be like with with 1 Corinthians 12.3. They put the word man, but it means all that other. Meaning nothing can say Jesus Christ is Lord who does not have the Holy Spirit inside. That's the word of God. Pray about these things. Pray about these things. Why am I so passionate? I grew up in, in, in the religious realm. I grew up, yes, in a church. I saw demons cast out. I saw the operating of the Spirit, Holy Spirit. I've seen signs of wonders. I operate in signs of wonder under the power of the Holy Spirit in Jesus Christ's name. Can't do it on my own. Why I'm saying all this in all that, there's a lot of stuff I have been taught. Had Jesus Christ is unteaching me. Having to unteach me because it was drilled in me since I was little. And I ask him to do it. Holy Spirit, reveal me the truth. Help me strip away everything that's not correct. Unless you show me, as John 14, 26 says, and 1 John 2, 27, how am I to know? But I have to activate my faith. I have to step out, and I have to do the research under his leading. You don't get everything on a silver platter. You do the work, and as you study, and as you do that work, you will grow in Him. And in addition, you will learn His voice. Trust the Lord. Trust the process. When I was looking up Scripture today, I just had to stop. And I said, Lord, is there anything else? Because I got in, in so deep. And I mean, it's script, Scripture I already had written down, but I went into a deeper study. On some of these things I've been praying and fasting and seeking the Lord about. Because I'm concerned. When people call things out. And it's not scripturally lining up. 
And my concern is not for me, it's for the people, especially when they're children of God. And my concern is for them. So please pray for your brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ. Pray for wisdom, pray for understanding. And again, I say this again boldly in the name and authority of Jesus Christ, who is my Savior. Try and test everything for your own sake. You are instructed to do that. Again, 1 John 4, 1 through 3, 13 through 5, 1 Corinthians 12 through 3, and 1 Thessalonians 5, 20 through 21. You are instructed to pray without ceasing, to examine, to prove everything. When you when you start seeking and studying, you start asking. It's making petitions known. It's another form. It's a request. Ask and you shall receive. Not everybody has to stand up and make long oratorical speeches. Speak to God like you speak to your family. He wants that relationship with you. So does Jesus Christ. All right, I feel like I need to wrap this up. I apologize for the the the, the pauses and things. Um, I had left out some words, little words like the and and, and just hadn't to write them in there. You could tell when I was writing it out. There's a lot of things coming. It's time to make sure you're ready in Jesus Christ. Now, I'm going to say this again. I do not like sharing personal information. I like to keep my life closed in and just take it to Jesus Christ. Those of you on the front line, be aware these things do happen. And in all that's been allowed, it has taught me warfare in many ways, but it's kept me close to Jesus Christ and Father God, and I'm grateful for that. You take all this to Jesus Christ. I'm not trying to draw attention to myself. I wish I did not have to have my face known. I do. It's all about Jesus Christ. you got to understand, He has to be first. Jesus Christ has to be first. He's the only way to heaven. He's the only way to get to Father God. And if you can't accept Jesus Christ, you're missing out on the greatest love that's ever been. You're missing out on a restored relationship also with Father God, the Creator, who loves you so much He made just one of you, one of you in this world. If you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you want that relationship restored with Father God, you have to do it through Jesus Christ. It is nothing that you do yourself except confessing and believing because Jesus Christ, Father God, Jesus Christ has done paid the horrible price Look at it this way. Because you're in a sin nature body, Adam and Eve fell into sin. You're more or less in your natural body, unsaved or backslidden on death row. You're guilty. The wages of sin is death, Romans 6.23. You're living in sin. Jesus Christ paid the price for you. He gave his life, his all, so that can be marked paid by his blood, his precious, precious blood. Please say this prayer with me. Jesus Christ, speak to my heart, change my life, change that old stony heart into a soft one. I ask you forgive me of all my sins and wash me clean. I'm tired of living this life of sin. I want you to come into my heart. Now I confess you as my Lord. I confess you are the Son of God who came to this earth by virgin birth and was both God and man. You gave your life freely. You were whipped for me freely. And that you rose again so I could have eternal life with you. I accept you now into my heart, right now. In Jesus Christ's name I pray. 
And it's that simple. It is that simple. It's that simple. I recommend you get baptized with water. Ask Jesus Christ to lead you to somebody that can do that. And don't argue whether you're to be baptized in the name of God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, or Jesus Christ. Because inside of the name of Jesus Christ, inside of Jesus Christ, is God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Don't let people get you into an argument. It's not worth it. You're not supposed to argue over the word. I, I recommend you get a Bible. I have the KJV. I actually, I'm double warned today. I have to. <laughs> Praise the Lord. You need to know the word. You need to know your Savior. I recommend you start in the book of John. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. I mean, I love the whole word of God, but John talks so much about who Jesus Christ is. He's a good shepherd. He's a protector. How he gave his life. It's just, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but shall have everlasting life. For he sent his son, for he sent his son to the world he sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. John 3, 17. All right. This is a My Lovely Jesus Ministry. We have um, a website, www.mylovelyjesusministry.com. On there you'll find copies of the PDFs for the dreams, visions, and such like. It takes a few days sometimes to get the, the more recent ones out. You can always pull the transcript from YouTube a few hours later if you do not want to wait. They're free to use, to share, but if you change words to change the meaning and the Holy Spirit leads me to it, I will ask you to take them down and not use them again. Otherwise, they're free to use. Everything's free. It's Jesus Christ. It all belongs to Jesus Christ. It all belongs to Father God, and that's how it's going to stay. If you want to submit a, a prayer request, the Telegram channel, the link will be underneath this video or on the others, is, is opened for prayer request. It is open for other comments. If you start posting other prophetic videos, links, and stuff like that, I will take it down. Lord has told me to because I am not going to spend my time that I could have with him, having to sit through and discern what is of God and what's not. I'm not putting garbage into my spirit, nor is the sight going to do, to do that. It will be immediately removed, just so you'll know. Anything else that God says to take off, it will be taken off, no questions asked. It is his sight, Father God, Jesus Christ, and it is open for prayer requests, but you are allowed other comments. But if you also... Starts spewing unbiblical doctrine, that will be removed immediately too. This is to be a safe place for brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ to submit prayer request. That's the whole reason it's being open, so don't abuse it. God bless. Stay under the blood. And the reason, I hear you, Lord, the reason it is telegram. That is the one that Jesus Christ chose. We will not be opening up the others. At least not at this time unless he says later. All right. Please pray for one another. Reach out to your brother and sister in need. Remember, help the poor. Feed the hungry. Be the hands and feet of Jesus Christ that we're called to be. If you're in need, say for instance, you're needing food, and the Lord tells you to give something out of your freezer. Give it ungrudgingly, and watch Him bless you. If you need money for whatever financial reading um, need is, and you have twenty dollars in your pocket, and He says give ten of it, or He says give twenty of it, give it in faith. Watch Him bless you. All right, pray about it. Though be led by the Holy Spirit in all things. God bless from Tennessee. I'm not in Tennessee. I'm sorry. 
God bless. Stay under the blood of Jesus Christ always. Know that I love you. I love all. Even those that's been been enemies. I just, I'm not holding anything in my heart. Any malice. I'm not. No bitterness. Not doing it. I, I refuse to in Jesus Christ's name. I choose to love and forgive all. Bye-bye.